All right. Welcome to the second ever Wall Street Songs podcast. What's up, Mr. Austin? Dude, I, second. I had no idea I was second. I love that. I, I This was like like 14 episodes in the making. I'm honored, man. Thank you. Dude, it's very good to have you. If people don't already know, tell them who you are. Um, My name is Austin, and I create personal finance and investing content on TikTok primarily. Um, hot takes on Twitter sometimes about cryptocurrency or random things that are going on in the markets. Um, I'm also an angel investor, a strategic advisor, and uh, trying to do everything I can to close the wealth gap in the United States in a responsible manner. I love it. I absolutely love it. You are one of the first people that people get exposed to when they go to Stock Talk. Did you know that? As you're I, I scrolling did not. through TikTok, as you're scrolling through and the algorithm starts to learn who you are. And when I first when I first joined TikTok and I'm scrolling through all of these funny videos, all of these dance videos, TikTok started to learn what I like. And it starts mm-hmm. showing me stock videos, money videos, and it kind of it puts me in that little pigeonhole. And then every time I would scroll, I would see Austin with that blue little check mark. And I'm like, who is this guy? And I click on it. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then I follow. And then it just keeps showing more and more of your videos. And then I just, I dubbed you as the the king of stock talk. So, so we're just going to go with that. I appreciate that. But I, I don't think that, 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 I, that, that's not true. <laughs> there are tons <laughs> of other creators that are crushing it. But I think like that, that, that's an interesting segue into a conversation I want to have about like general education and getting people generally excited about investing, right? Like as we take a step back and think, you know, the TikTok algorithm, look, you know, you're a random person to the TikTok algorithm at, at one point, right? You they have no idea who you are, what you're doing. So random people like funny videos, if that's a cat video, if that's cooking, maybe that's a video about sports, like just throwing general high level, you know, bucketed categories at you to better figure out what's going on with one of those high level, easy to understand categories being personal finance and investing, right? Education. Um, you know, my, my most viral video was about how anyone theoretically uh, could retire a millionaire by by investing with a Roth IRA, right? Uh, I had like 7 million views. And I guess because it was super simple, high level information that everyone should have learned in high school or even college for, the, for that matter, uh, but but masses of people didn't. And so that's, I guess, why well, it was so intriguing to a lot of people. But it's, it's just so interesting because it's kind of like that, that, that gateway drug. It's like, oh, sweet. Wait, what is this going on? And then that turns into, oh, wait, stocks. Okay, what are stocks? And then it turns into like, Oh, wait, so I can begin like budgeting and like figuring out taxes and like understanding, you know, how much I should be investing as, as, a, as a percent of allocation of my budget and like how to earn more potentially or how like it's just like this, this massive like snowball effect into just um, personal finance and investing. And it's I'm honored that, that you think that I uh, I'm, I'm sort of that gateway drug person. I love it. Yeah, you definitely are. The way you're able to simplify complex subjects, I think, is what really draws people in. Um, a, a lot of your videos I've noticed, they're not very short form, like 15 second videos. And the majority of them are a little bit longer form when you're looking at other TikTok videos and you're watching it and you're five seconds in you're 10 seconds in. And then you realize that, wait, this is a longer video that's going to start explaining something. And then you keep watching and you keep watching. And the more you watch, the more you end up learning and then the more you just get hooked onto that content and your ability to simplify these concepts like yeah invest in a Roth IRA and you'll eventually become a millionaire and it, it's a very simple concept that they don't teach but TikTok teaches for you and and I, I really do think you're a pioneer in that space where you're drawing in these people and educating them in a very simple and very clear manner so I, I really do think that um so on that, on the note of people learning and people getting this snowball effect, how did you get started? Who are you? Yeah, yeah. So I'll give you the whole run through here, right? So how I day one got started in investing or just like, you know, was exposed to what the stock market was and how powerful it is for, you know, both good and bad. Uh, for some people, depending on how you leverage it. Um, so back in 2005, 2006, my dad took an early retirement. 
Um, and, you know, he was, he had his nest egg. He was good. Like, you know, all, you know, family's good. My mom at the time was stay at home. And so like, everything was great, hunky dory. And then uh, in 2007, 2008, the stock market crashed. My dad was panicking. He was franked, you know, just, he didn't have the specific, um, I guess, strategic levers in place to pull if such, if, if something like that had happened. And so my entire life was flipped upside down. I had to leave all my friends, moved across the country, had to find a new job. Then my parents ended up living in two different places at some time. It's like, same thing with me and my sister. It was just a really weird, weird, like four or five years. Right. And uh, because of that, I was just like, okay, if one thing that I don't even know, I, what the hell is a stock market? Like this, this one thing can impact my life. Something I don't even know existed beforehand so much. Like I want to learn every single thing I can about it. So I can make sure one, that it never happens to me when I'm older, right? Like it happened to my dad. And two, that other people can feel better prepared, better, I guess, just, just ready in case something, something happens at that some sort of black swan event or something that they just weren't expecting or they can be prepared in a good way for leveraging the tools of compound interest and, and just you know, what the stock market can do for a lot of people uh, in a good way so they can you know, maybe have that early retirement or just become financially free or, or just stable. Um, and so that's when uh, I was just, like, just generally exposed. And I took that to high school where Dave Ramsey, my, I think my junior year, um, so I'd have been 16 at the time, 17, something like that. And uh, anyway, so Tennessee, I'm not sure if you guys knew this, but well, first off, Dave, Dave Ramsey's headquartered here in Tennessee, here in Brentwood, but Tennessee is the number one state for bankruptcy per capita, which I'm not sure if anyone knew that, but like, turns out people just file bankruptcy in Tennessee. And it's, it's like, well, that's a problem from a financial literacy perspective at you know, the core level of education in our, in our education systems, like, let's fix that. So Dave Ramsey was like, cool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going to every high school in the state of Tennessee and having them understand what my baby steps are, right? Understand to have that thousand dollars, understand paying off debt, understand um, the, the larger emergency fund, investing towards retirement, paying off you know, house early fund, stuff like that. And so I remember, <clears throat> excuse me, sitting in class and uh, he, there's this example that Dave has. It's like this kid named Tom and another kid named Billy. And Tom invests into a Roth IRA from 18 to 25, like 500 bucks a month. So he's maxing it out. But then Billy doesn't start investing towards retirement at all until like 35 or even 40. But he like triples the amount of money every single month that, that, that uh, Tom had originally invested. And he still ends up with less money. And he's like, that's the power of compound interest. That's how people can get ex extremely wealthy by leveraging the right investments in the stock market over long periods of time. And I'm like, yo, this is awesome. Like, let me learn more about this. And so like any other 17, 18 year old idiot that has no idea what stocks are, you start looking at like the penny stocks, like the ones you can afford. Mm -hmm. And so I remember my first like big, like penny stock, just burn loss. I don't know what the name of the stock was. I don't remember the ticker, but what ended up happening was me and some friends figured out at least we thought we figured out the company that was going to make the iPhone 4S or the iPhone 5's uh, LCD screen. Oh, We're like, okay, yeah, yeah, this is this is the one, guys. We, we buy like two hundred dollars in this, and it's going to be two hundred thousand by the time like we're like it's you know one of those things. And so we all lost our money, of course. And I'm like, all right, guys, let's uh, maybe I should start thinking more strategically about investing and and, and stocks and whatnot. Um, and so that's I guess what got me excited about studying finance and economics in college over at the University of Tennessee. Um, obviously I wasn't in like any like interesting classes until like sophomore, junior year, but, you know, we still had some general accounting classes. We still had some general, you know, business management classes, which, um, certainly kept my interest, uh, rolling and, uh, and, and then it just was this awesome. Okay. Now I see Graham, Stefan, Andre, Jick and me, Kevin crushing it on YouTube. Let me get in front of a camera and try it myself. Uh, that's Boom. Awesome. That's the whole thing. That's I don't think awesome. I've ever like said all of that on a podcast before, but all right, let's just end it here. That was a great talk with Mr. Awesome. <laughs> um, no, that, that's an, that's an awesome story. I, I really resonate a lot with that. And I know 2008, 2009 really flipped a lot of people upside down. Uh, my family alike, uh, d destroyed in real estate and, um, it, it impacted a lot of people and it also turned off a lot of people to the world of finance. Um, people come into it thinking, why would I put my money somewhere where something like that could happen? Why mm -hmm. shouldn't I just keep my money under my mattress? Yep. So that's yep. one sect of people. And then there's another section of people like us that got affected by it. And we're like, what the hell? 
like i let's, want revenge baby yeah, like, like let's, yeah, let's, let's go get at that it money now back and let's let's grow it 50x so yeah it, yeah there's there's two sets of people and then there's also that that middle set where they're just now getting to the age where they see all of these things happening oh this is what happened 10 years ago uh covid happened last year so they're kind of still learning they're looking back in history they're looking forward they're trying to figure it out and then they're scrolling through tiktok and they see you first apparently because i again you're the, the king of stock talk i'm just gonna keep saying that and then they keep scrolling and then they find my tiktok and they're like who's this guy where's his face and then they keep scrolling and then they find those the what i call the toxic stock talk mm. where yep yep make money fast uh penny stocks these scam coins these alt coins like it's crazy how crazy stock talk can get and how educational at the same time and that's actually why i made my tiktok is to kind of battle against that toxic stock talk so um, i think it's so funny because every i guess you know how you say toxic stock talk videos like in this signal call, we made mm -hmm. everyone 10 times the, like the most like weird, crazy, like yeah. circus voice that's coming out. Like we did all these awesome things and you too can do this for a simple payment of $59 a month. Mm -hmm. Right. And I just, it's, it's funny. And you know, kudos to them that make money. Um, if, if you're, that's what you're into and you're, you're doing day trading or something's happening and you're actually learning and you're benefiting from that, you know, hats off. Um, but unfortunately a lot of those are, are not valid. They're not real. And a lot of people do um, do lose their money. Yeah, it's the the price you pay. It's a it's a hard lesson to learn, um, and some people just have to pay that tuition to figure that out. Um, but on on that note of, you see these Discord groups, you see all of these other uh, platforms where you pay fifty nine dollars a month to get trade alerts. You get all of these other uh, benefits and stuff. At what point? does it make sense for a creator to start monetizing something like that? Because those people who are creating those things think that they are providing a valuable service, but they also put a paywall up against educational content. They also put a paywall up against things that maybe you and I believe should be free. So I'm just curious, what are your thoughts on creator monetizing stuff? Yeah, for sure, man. So I guess I'll start thinking through and, and sort of talking through how I approach creator monetization and, and how I was um, fortunate enough to sort of build this flywheel. But so at its core, right, we have TikTok content. At its core, you're, you're, you know, you're making 59 second videos about like, I think the very first video that really got me excited to make was why I'm buying Square stock at $45 a share. Um, and same thing with like Disney, right? Back in, back when COVID was, was running rampant. But it's like, okay, we have 59 seconds to make a video explaining which, you know, a stock pitch or a general pitch on just whatever, like why I'm doing something like that can be a long video, right? But mm -hmm. only 59 seconds. And so what I did was I, I, I figured out a way to have the video, get my, get my point, points across, and then use Patreon as a, as a mechanism to sort of add in that extra, extra detail, the extra color. Right, it's it's going to come up with the SEC filings of of some some sites that I sorted, or or maybe the the most recent investor relations presentation, or maybe a transcript of of what was said during their their most recent earnings uh, call. Right, and so it's like, hey guys, here's my general ideas why I like why I like Square. Here's my ten page report as to why I like Square. And if you want to see that ten page report, go check out my Patreon. Um, it's it's all free. Go do your thing. Like that's cool because I I agree. Right, information is free. I think that we should not. Um, you, know, it, you can Google anything and learn anything through Investopedia or, or anything else like that. But um, so what I'm trying to do and, and sort of how I treat the monetization aspect of like the information in my TikTok and stuff like that is it starts with here's awesome free TikTok content. Here's the further explanation, the back end information on sort of how I came to those conclusions. Um, but then what I'm doing with my money against those conclusions, that's where I'm like, hey, let's let's figure something out, right? Let's monetize. Um, and I, I think it's interesting, you know, people might disagree with my ideas or, or a conclusion I have. And I was like, you know what, Mike, my, my idea or conclusion or pitch is, it, is it's worth exactly how much you paid for it, which is nothing. And if you don't agree with that, I'd love to hear your opinions as to why, but I, I, I just think it's irresponsible to sort of charge people, um, 
to, for, for stuff like that versus saying, hey guys, here's the landscape. Here's what we know is going on. Here's how I'm strategically investing into you know, during today's uh, landscape. Uh, you know, economic, just, just whatever's going on. Right. And so that to me is, I think is, is what people happily pay for. And especially if you, if you sort of preface and, and sort of how I've really tried to do this with my Patreon is preface. This as like, I'm no expert. I don't work on wall street. I never ran a hedge fund, but I do know a thing or two about this or that. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys might have, but let's build a community. So we're all asking each other questions. We're all answering each other's questions. We're bringing up, you know, ideas or, or we're sharing the most recent earnings reports on companies we really like, and we're diving deep into why, you know, maybe Wall Street said this, but we think this, right? And so, you know, leaning away from like trying to sell alerts and leaning and pivoting more toward let's build a community of, of like-minded investors that all just want to become financially independent one day um, on the back of tons and tons of free content, tons and tons of um, free analysis and free ideas. But, to, to, you know, and, but, but, but what the monetization of that comes from is like, hey, now let's figure out, like, you, you, know, you know what I'm doing. Well, I'm sorry. You know uh, all this information. Here's how I'm deploying my capital against mm-hmm. that information. And then I think, I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like monetizing um, as it relates to trading and, and, and investing and, and things like that is, is tricky. But on the same token, I, I can't think of a better way, a more fair way to, to try and go about that, that strategy. I, yeah, I love that. Um, the concept of free education is extremely important to me. I, I started this TikTok and it eventually grew to where it is now because of that genuine tone where I don't yeah. care. I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you what I know. And yeah. if you like it, follow, if you don't, whatever. And it just grows and I keep growing it and growing it. And it gets to the point where you look at the hundreds of thousands of people that are tuning in to everything you're posting and you say, wait a second, if everyone gave me a dollar, that would be a hundred thousand dollars. That would be $400,000. So you start thinking that way, but then you have to be a little careful. You're saying, well, why would they give me a dollar? And it's all about providing value. So mm-hmm. with, with my TikTok, I haven't monetized anything yet. And all I do is, is just post these videos for free, get people educated and tell them what I know. If they have any questions, I respond to pretty much every single comment on my TikTok. 100%. Yeah. And we just, we're building this community and growing and growing. But that note of monetizing what you do with your education, that is really important. Uh, and, and I really, I really resonate with that because sure, I can tell you everything I know, but if you want to see what I'm actually doing, that's a little different. And, yeah. and it's not like, it's like a trade secret where like, Oh, I'm yeah, going to yeah, let yeah. you in on the, <laughs> this super cool new tactic to make 200% a day. No, it's not like that, but it's, it's moving the blinds a little bit, adding that transparency, building that community. And you avoid the freeloader effect where if it was completely open and free, you would just get a bunch of crazy people in there who are just pumping a bunch of altcoins all the time. And you're like, dude, stop. And and you need like 15 moderators to start banning everybody. And it just gets crazy. Um, But if you weed them out with $5 a month, $15 a month, whatever it is, then you start building a quality community that actually is, that actually has skin in the game and, and they want to, participate and grow that community with you and it just increases the quality a little bit Um, i also think you know as it relates to monetization figuring out fair ways to monetize right value added monetization strategies how i've begun to approach this topic because it's like you know if i'm going to be making tiktok and i'm spending 65 to 80 hours a week like creating incredible content i definitely want to have a long-term vision as to how i would get paid doing that right it's not you know where, where, where people on youtube don't really have to have a strategy like that it's like they just rely on the on the youtube adsense tiktok doesn't have that as you as you know we get paid i think like three cents per thousand views i think i was paid 22 dollars the most like most uh, a month like it's it's crazy right mm-hmm. um compared to you know we see graham stefan raking in like three million off youtube no, no knocking on graham i'm just you know comparing apples to dragons for the most mm-hmm. part right it's crazy but um, on one side of things, like, okay, how do, we, how do we monetize in such a way that is valuable for our audience? So then I, I said, okay, how do, I, how do I start this? Well, what type of tools and resources am I leveraging to execute on my ideas? 
So one of that, so, so you know, what are we doing? We're, we're investing into stocks, right? So that's uh, an online broker, right? We're investing toward retirement. That's a robo-advisor perhaps where, you know, you can invest into real estate. Okay, that, you know, there, that's maybe like a fund rise. Um, okay, well, what about alternative asset investing? Cool, that's like a rally road or masterworks, right? And so, <clears throat> excuse me. And so what I've done is I try to identify these pillars uh, these these sort of investing pillars that align very well with my brand because I've either used them for the last several years or I would be happy to use them and recommend them. But it's like, as investors, what are we investing into and how are we deploying our capital? Let me then make a relationship with that specific company that, or brand that I've either already been using for years or, or be happy to start using um, and then get paid as other people leverage that brand to execute on trades or whatever that looks like um but it's but they're doing that not because they 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 because i'm telling them to they're doing it because they want to also invest in real estate because they also want to invest in cryptocurrency because they also want to invest for retirement and if, and if i can get paid on the back end of that while they're also you know doing things that they want to do then like then it's a win-win-win for everybody right i'm getting paid the brands love it because they know that i've got odd audience loyalty and that that I'm, I'm a, a positive figure that represents who they are and what they're trying to do as, as a company. And the audience loves it because like, whoa, I wasn't investing into, you know, like, I can't tell you how many people, dude, you got me investing toward retirement with, with that Betterment video. I now have a Roth IRA with $7,000 in it because of you. Dude, that's, that's so cool. fucking awesome. Like, that's yeah. so cool, right? And so it's like, it's this perfect flywheel of everybody's happy. It works out. And as long as, I guess, you're able to continue to make content that sort of um, doesn't get, to adsy to like, hey, let me tell you about Betterment again, right? Yeah. But maybe you know, create content that's compelling enough for people to continue learning and and, and stay attached to it, um, as well as you know, the brands obviously have some sort of leeway on on whatever that looks like. I think that's that's the that's the end goal for a lot of people, and the way that a lot of creators should be focused on monetizing is like, how do I make content, and then how do I sort of you know what problems can I fix with my content, and then what brands can I introduce to make those solutions 10 times better mm -hmm. definitely and, and it's it's worked incredibly well yeah that's awesome um and especially with companies like public and robin hood and stuff who've made mm -hmm. such an easy entry and i feel like if you're walking down the street now versus if you're walking down the street like five years from now or five years ago and you mm -hmm. ask somebody about investing it's completely different and technology's grown so much and there's all these new apps and all these new services where those companies have made it so easy to get into the stock market or get into investing or at least at least know what it is that it could also be a double edged sword where now there's so many things and there are so many different tools that you could look into there are so many creators that are talking about all these different tools that if you are a trusted creator and you've built this community and if you suggest to use an app or a service that those people will trust that and adopt that. And I feel like it's only fair if you also get paid through like the affiliate marketing uh, business model, but you also get paid for building that community and then suggesting what you use. Um, and I emphasize what you use because <laughs> You should see, and I'm sure you get it too, but you should see the emails that I get from Dude. Oh my gosh. these these coins uh, recently, but yeah, even, yeah, oh even my gosh. some brands, but recently these coins are reaching out saying, hey, we just started this this dog coin and it's, it's going to go 10,000% in the next 24 hours. You should probably tell your community, we'll pay you like two grand. And I'm like, you know what's no. frustrating about that? It's what? like I'm sure that they all reach out to the same mm -hmm. 25 to 30 of us on TikTok, mm -hmm. and you know you you're like you know they say yeah we'll pay you two grand, four grand, ten grand, whatever like the number is, and then you're like no that's not right. I'm okay, thank you though. But then you see your friend do it, right? They, uh -huh. I I don't want to name names, but like I saw I I got a DM on Instagram pretty much saying like hey pump our coin. I was like no thanks, see you later, bye. It's not my deal. And then two days later, I'm scrolling on TikTok and I see a guy I follow like in our space and he's like talking about it as like the next safe moon. I'm just like, oh, dude, <laughs> like that's a problem mm -hmm. that so I'm not I'm not as mad at the guy for taking the deal as I am for the problem of this guy being forced to take the deal to pay his mortgage. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Right. So like I'm not like. 
it's shitty that he did that. But I also wish that there was an ecosystem or some sort of solution in place where creators weren't forced to take these lucrative, shitty brand partnerships mm -hmm. to compensate themselves. Which is, I guess, what Stan. I'm not sure. If, yeah, maybe you've heard of Stan. It's it's a link yeah. in the bio, link in my bio solution it. that I use. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, you know, that's what Stan's like trying to solve for, right? It's like let's figure out how we can maybe give these creators the tools and features and. Um, you know, Shopify for creators, right? A way to help them, you know, if they want to write an ebook, let's help them write that ebook, mm -hmm. right? If they want to offer live classes or maybe one-on-ones -on, on their calendar, like let's build the tools in the back end so they can do that so they don't have to take the $2,000 Shibu, Inu, mm -hmm. Safe Moon bullshit coin, you know, ads and look like an asshole. Yeah. They have money coming in from other places. And, and I hope that obviously there's always going to be those one-off shitty things that happen, but I, I hope that as, you know, the creator economy continues to mature, and more tools get built out and put in place, allowing these creators to um, monetize their audience in such a way that doesn't decay the relationship between the two of them from a trust perspective, but instead is this, they now have more creative ways to sell their time and energy and attention mm -hmm. to their audience. If that's a live class, an ebook, or you know, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever that might be, um, that that becomes the norm, that becomes the standard, and uh, and and we won't have these shitty situations anymore. Yeah. Are you a full-time content creator? Yeah, I quit my job in uh, March. Yeah, so that that's a, a unique scenario because you're looking for these different opportunities to kind of just pad the stats and, and just you have that, that cash flow. That's an income source. There are some people, though, like myself, actually, who have a nine-to-five job or yeah. have um, different sources of income. And then when somebody comes and says, I'll give you $10,000 cash half now, half after you post it. If you talk about this, this, and this, you're going to be like, oh. yeah, I know. It's like, oh, like, that's, that's two months worth of salary. Yeah, like, okay. Like, <laughs> like all I have to do is make a video and you, but then it's easier for people who are full-time content creators to fall into that because they're like, okay, easy. Got it. But it's just so important to have your brand's value first. Mm -hmm. So if you think to yourself and you've mapped out in your head, my brand is worth $100,000 by next year or whatever the number is. I'm just using these random numbers. Yeah, yeah. Whatever your number is, I am worth this by like this time. That helps you position yourself to take the right decisions to take your brand to that level. Because if you take that easy $10,000 that might knock your brand value down by $20,000. So you essentially lost $10,000. So totally understand. yeah. So yeah. that that's just really, really important to be able to gauge your brand, who you are and align yourself to be on that path to, to not make to the moon videos. <laughs> yeah, it's well, crazy, man. Hoping that, you know, and, and, and I, as well as maybe, maybe not you, I can't speak towards your, your own experiences, but like, you know, one of the first, um, the first paid TikTok I ever did, uh, I was super excited. They paid me 40 bucks, 40 nice. bucks. I was so stoked. And it was this video game. It was an app you download on your phone. You do this 15 to 20 minute, like, um, to, not tutorial, uh, campaign mode in a video mm -hmm. game, right? And by the decisions you make in the video game, it tells you sort of what your soft skills are, your strengths, your weaknesses, things like that. And then it gives you very clear sentences to add to your resume or to say during a job interview to describe mm. yourself. I'm like, you know what? That's cool. That's cool. I can help yeah. with that. That's awesome. And, and it was back. It was like on Shark Tank. It was like backed by Mark Cuban or some shit. It's like it wasn't obviously a bad company. But like, it's just, it's crazy to me how the... I don't know, just like seeing the different types of companies that you wouldn't think exist that could align with your brand is also really interesting. Yeah. Are, are they paying you $40 to talk about it now? <laughs> I, I have not talked with them in, yeah. in probably <laughs> not. So that's funny. You know, it was one of those one uh, and dones. I'm trying to remember what, what the name of that thing was. I forget the name of it, man. But I made a video on it. It was sick. I loved it. It was. I played the video game myself to like figure out what I was. Like it was so cool, man. I'll, I'll figure it out awesome. and send it to you. That's funny. Yeah. No. But I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of uh, taking on projects that you know, love, understand, use, see used around you, or see some sort of value in it. So um, that that makes total sense to me. I think I've I've done 
two paid ads on my page so far. Um, and they're, they're both, I would use it. I do use it. I look at it. I like it. I think my followers yeah. would find some value in it. And then I think I've turned down over 50 or so of. Well, so that's, what's interesting to me. It's like, I've been a Betterment customer since 2015. I, st- I opened up my, my, my investment account with Betterment in 2015. I was not paid by Betterment to make my video that got 7 million views, but it drove them 45,000 funded accounts, which to them was worth 6 million in marketing, Jeez. right? Which was crazy. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get the sense of that. But now I'm on their payroll. We're friends. We love it. I, I, you know, I love them. They love me. We, like, I, I'm, a, I'm a user and I'm a really cool proponent of the brand. Um, so those are the type of relationships that I think work out very, very well. It's like, what co- like Fundrise is another really good example. I'm reading Morning Brew back in like 2018 and Fundrise is one of the, the ads that runs through talking about how you can invest in like institution level, you know, private real estate without, you know, having a private equity firm behind you and to leverage Fundrise to do that. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. So I've been rocking with them since 2018. I've had an account. Everything's cool. And uh, I, I mentioned them just willy nilly in one of my videos as, as to, as, as a way to expose yourself to real estate when you're building a well diversified portfolio from scratch. And their head of marketing DMs me like, yo, this is cool. You want to like do something here? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to do something. Like, I love you guys. Those are the perfect relationships mm-hmm. that I wish every creator could experience. It's like looking like, and, and that's a really good, let's segue into consumers and investing. Um, but that's like, that's understanding who you are as a consumer, what you use, and then figuring out how you can then also tell that story and, and, and sort of why you use them to your audience. I just, I love it, man. That's great. Um, but, but then, you know, as it relates to consuming, right? Let's talk mm-hmm. about that for a moment. I get this question all the time and I'd love to, I, maybe you do too. I'd love to get your insight here. But like people are always asking like, yo, what stock should I buy? Mm-hmm. What stock should I buy? What stock should I buy? Do I buy this random biotech stock? Should I buy this crazy EV stock? Do I buy this Chinese company stock? I'm like, no, 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 no. What are you, what are you doing here? Take a step back. Go look at your bank statement. Go look at your credit card statement. Like, where do you shop? What do you buy? What do you understand? What's in your house, right? You should be investing into the companies that you are a consumer of. Dollar General, maybe you shop at Walmart, maybe you shop at CVS or Target. What are you buying at those places? Are you buying baby shampoo at John, you know, Johnson & Johnson, Tylenol, Johnson & Johnson? Are you buying deodorant uh, for Procter & Gamble? Are you buying um, you know, what, whatever, right? Are you buying a keyboard from um, Logitech? Like You are a consumer, which means if you understand what you're consuming, and you think that other people also understand and like to consume those products, why not be an investor into the, you know, into that company? And I think that's um, a weird realization that a lot of people unfortunately don't have until they're sort of like in the game for a little bit. It's like, damn, you're right. Like I should be investing in the company as I actually understand instead of mm-hmm. trying to get rich quick by buying stock in a random EV or some random biotech company. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is, that is it. That's it. That that is the most important thing to know when you get started with investing or even want to look at investing. I have a video. It's one of my favorite videos I've made, um, and I'm just going to make a hundred different versions of it. But it says, where should I put my thousand dollars? What should I invest a thousand dollars in? And I grab my phone and I say, OK, what is this? This is an Apple, Apple iPhone. OK, exactly. So it's yep. Apple. And then. Um, so I wake up, I look at my phone, and then um, I'm hungry. So then I go to Uber Eats because I'm too lazy. I don't want to go out. And then I order uh, McDonald's, Uber, McDonald's, Apple. And then while I'm waiting for the food, I go on Snapchat. And then, um, then you I'll buy, check you out might Instagram. Catch something on, yeah, yeah. maybe hop on Netflix for a, a hot second. Maybe Amazon Prime Video could be your thing. Dude, yeah. yes. And, I love, and then or, or, or then you're like, you know, like yo, hey, Google. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my Google assistant right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, it's so, I love that stuff, man. I yeah, wish that I've read a stat and I, maybe you've seen this too. It's like, um, we're exposed to like 500 advertisements a day or That's something crazy that. like that. Uh, it's 5,000. Like, 5,000. Oh yeah. You are. What are the, okay. Yeah. You're totally right. Yeah. Dude. I, I would love to just sit down and just like look around and say how many, I think that'd be a fun experiment. Like how mm-hmm. many publicly held companies are we just like looking and consuming and just like touching on a daily basis? Mm-hmm. And maybe put that into some sort of like index or, or I don't know. I think that'd be so cool. It's just the most important thing. And I hear this every single day 
And if I ever go to a friend's house, I'm that I'm the, I'm the stock guy that everyone just wants to talk to about stocks. And it's just, hey, what's the what should I buy? Uh, what like this? I think this one's gonna be the next Amazon. Yeah. I think this one's gonna be the next this. And every time I hear this is going to be the next, and I hear it every other video on TikTok, I just found the next X, Y, and Z. And it's like, first of all, no, stop. Second of all, the next big thing is already a big thing. If you're looking for the next big Amazon, just invest in Amazon. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's crazy because I mean, I'd argue too, and I'm and I, I just pulled up their stock to to sort of run through this and and really hammer this home. Amazon is the next Amazon, uh-huh. right? Google is the next Google. Apple is the next Apple, right? Amazon's up three hundred and sixty percent in the last five years. You compare that three hundred sixty percent. That's crazy. Let's compare that to the S and P for a moment, which was up only one hundred and one percent, right? Mm-hmm. It's like what more do you want? Like you guys want to get 300% in a day? Like, okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just weird, man. People are, people are wild, but yeah. um, I, I totally agree, dude. And, and, and I think what's frustrating is people see or are exposed to videos or just their friends talking about, or they, you know, I got a stock guy that, you know, but anyway, they see these circumstances where someone did buy a Peloton at 30 bucks and mm-hmm. then it went to 160 and they're like, Oh, yo, I can, you know, five, six X my money in the stock market. This is cool. And, um, and I use that as like an actual quality company, like Peloton versus like a penny stock. Mm-hmm. But then they think like, okay, if it works for this anomaly quality dope company, like maybe it'll work for this other, maybe not so dope company, like shitty penny stock. And then, and then it's just this, this vicious cycle, unfortunately. Um, but I, I, I love that dude. And I, I, I think that, and I'm not sure if you're into cryptocurrency or not, but yeah. um, a lot of people are like, what's the next chain link? And I'm like, guys, chain link is the next chain link. Like yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Like Amazon's the next Amazon. Google's the next Google. You guys just aren't like realizing as, and, and I, I want to get your take on this too, as, as we move away from this work from home and might get back to the, you know, back to our offices or come back to some sort of normalized society again. I think that not every company is going to see the upside. And well, even stock prices, we've seen this in February and you know March as, as everything sold down. Not every company has seen a, a bounce back like Google or Facebook or Amazon has seen or Microsoft has seen where others, you know, the, the big winners in, in 2020 that might have been COVID stocks, quote unquote, mm-hmm. aren't bouncing back anymore. They're just, you know, Teladoc's a good example of this, unfortunately. I have a lot of stock in Teladoc. Um, but it's like, you know, what do you think? I, I think that there's going to be some of these behemoth titans gobbling up uh, market share because they have the resources to do that. Um, and despite there being awesome competition, sometimes that competition might not be um, executed on properly. I don't know. What do you think? So I think a lot of reopening trades are kind of priced in. I agree. Um, so airlines, they did well today. Um but it doesn't mean as soon as COVID is over, airline stocks are going to go up. Because first of all, when is COVID over? Yeah. Like, is it? Or is, when and will it? And then wh- they're not going to say like, they're not going to wave a flag and say COVID's over. And then the stock goes up the next day. Right. Um, it goes up in anticipation for months ago last year it it's been going up in anticipation for back to normal mm-hmm. but then the concept of back to normal is this a little bit normal now so like <laughs> you, you gotta yeah. think about what does normal mean do you mean 2020 2019 um 2018 it's everything is evolving and these big companies like facebook invested millions and millions and millions of dollars to be able to adapt to this newer normal and i I always use this example i'm at target and you see those stickers on the ground that say like stay six feet apart and then you see that sign that says like wear a mask and then you see a sign that says please social distance and my point is there's all this physical material that they a got designed got approved got printed and got installed that is a lot of money. That is mm-hmm. a lot of money. Uh, to design it requires a full team of designers. 
And then to get it approved, that has to go through corporate, which takes weeks. And mm -hmm. then to get it printed, the, the quality of that, it's just, and then times how many stores they have. That's yeah. millions yeah. of dollars to tell people to stand six feet apart. So they're not just going to rip that sticker off and throw it away. So these companies are, are shifting to this newer normal. They've spent a lot of money to be in this newer normal and their stock prices might reflect that. So um, Uber, for example, Uber goes up when, uh, for, for example, like travel goes up. Uh, when people want to travel more, they go with uh, Uber to go to the airport. And then if they're traveling, they don't have a car, they take Uber's places. Um, so like that side of the business was down a little bit, but Uber Eats, I order like all the time because I don't want to yeah. go out to a restaurant because COVID. So that side of the business goes up and then airlines, same thing. People don't travel stock goes down, but then the stock people invest in the company because they know, love, understand, and use that company and expect it to continue to be used. Airbnb said, uh, they're going to have like record breaking years, mm -hmm. but their stock. what's their price? It's like one thirty or something, one forty. I don't know. So like it's, yeah, it's well, I mean, I, I doubled down on Airbnb about yeah. a month ago, but yeah, so, no, I'm, I'm saying there. Yeah, totally. And I think what's interesting, my, the point that really go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, my point is I don't really care. Um, <laughs> I don't care what their price is going to do when things open because to me the, it's open i'm looking 10 years five years from now um i'm gonna invest in these companies that i know love understand use and see used around me i use airbnb all the time when i travel i use uber all the time when i travel i use american airlines i use a boeing plane i use my apple iphone uber like all of these things i use and i know i will continue to use whether there's COVID or not. I don't care what other people are doing. That's what I am doing. And if I'm doing it, there's millions of other people who are doing it. So I'm just gonna invest in their company and then the stock will go up eventually. So I'm just gonna keep buying dollar cost averaging over time and just growing with it. Totally agree, dude. Totally, totally agree with that statement. And I think the biggest um, you know, part of that that I, I really, really resonate with is you mentioned like these these companies' stock prices have been increasing over the last two months, six months, nine months, sort of priced in anticipation. I had a patron ask me um, after Amazon earnings. I think I might have went up or down like a couple percent, but it's like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, Amazon just reported earnings. Does this mean that they? Uh, let me go to their stocks just so we can get some real numbers around this. Um, hey, Amazon just reported earnings. Does this mean like they're you know all the growth for the month is you know all the all, you know the the company's perfectly priced like everything's fine. And I was like, well, I would say probably not, right? It's like, it's not like it was priced perfectly on this specific day and that it's not going to go up or down anymore. Because if you look back the last six weeks leading into the earnings call, the stock rallied 17%. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it's like, people, I don't know. I think people think it's an end all be all on a specific time, a specific date, a specific this, where in actuality, you know, airline stocks had the rebound and have been rebounding for the last six months or, or whatever mm -hmm. the, you know, it looks like. Um, and I think it's the same thing with, you know, uh, Airbnb, like you mentioned, it's, it's this, like, it's not short term, it's not the specific days, but it's like, what will these companies be in five years, seven mm -hmm. years, 10 years, how will their free cash flow per share be increasing in that in that time period? Um, and, and that's, you know, that's the, <laughs> the, the main question we're all trying to ask each other, right? It's like, hey, how can we identify companies and predict what their free cash flow per share might be in 10 years? And mm -hmm. if that's the case, because obviously we can predict stock, stock prices around that um, with average valuation multiples. But like, how can we figure out what those revenue assumptions are? Those, you know, margin profiles, both on the free cash flows and, the, um, you know, maybe uh, reinvestments in the company, stuff like that. And, uh, one, and and that's the, that's the tricky part, but that's the fun stuff about it, too. It's like and, and, and also if we're able to hold the company a product like an iPhone or, or stay at an Airbnb and understand really what this company is doing versus just making a shot in the dark, like a biotech. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a fun game, man. I really, I, I love it. Yeah. Um, and I just love being able to say I'm a, I'm a part owner of Airbnb, Uber, Apple. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I told this story, um, many times before, but it's, that's how I got into the stock market. My dad pretty much asked me, what company do you want to be the owner of? And I was just mm -hmm. a little kid and I'm like, I play Xbox. So then we bought Microsoft. Uh, and back then it was $17 a share. And, um, it was that concept that just really stuck with me. So that that's my investing strategy for my long-term portfolio. 
is look around me. What are the Xboxes around me? What am I using? What do I love? And will they continue to do what they're doing now, but better in five to 10 years? That's what I'm going to invest in. Um, and then if I really want to get into it, yeah, you look at the numbers and stuff, but, um, and that's not even considering just the macroeconomics of everything of how, uh, the 10 year, uh, treasury yield affects tech companies. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not even yeah. talking about, uh, policy and how, uh, policy changes will affect the price of stocks. So to your Patreon's question is Amazon, uh, truly priced now after earnings, well, what did they say during the guidance? Are they giving forward future guidance? Um, what did Jeremy Powell decide to do today with the the yield? It's it's there's so many things. It, it there's so many factors that you just can't comprehend all at the same time. That it's just like the ocean, and you just got to go yeah. with the waves. And just hey, I like Amazon, so I'm just gonna buy them. And like that, that that's what you got to do. <laughs> just ride the waves and dollar cost average, and grow into a sizable position, and just uh, retire with your Roth IRA, as your uh, as your uh, TikTok said. I love it, dude. Are you investing into any alternative assets? If that's crypto, if that's uh, real estate, or anything else like that? Yeah, I'm looking into real estate. Uh, the market is ridiculous um, oh my gosh dude so oh it's gosh. even more intimidating than it was last year <laughs> but yeah that that's on the that's on the horizon um cryptocurrency for sure um i've i remember uh bitcoin was like uh like less than a 100 bucks and i told my dad hey there's this new digital currency it's called bitcoin and my dad's like, hey, I don't know what that means. Get out of here. And <laughs> uh, we never bought Bitcoin back then. But um, anytime I could, like growing up, I would. I made the mistake of buying and selling crypto a lot. And if you look at my <clears throat> my account history, I'll see if I can pull it up. But if you look at my account history, you'll see like, oh, I bought like 10 Bitcoins and then sold nine of them and then bought one more and then like sold one more and then if you look at the PL at the end of the year i probably made like 200 bucks but then if you if i had just held and did what i did with stocks right that would have been millions of dollars like it's just crazy to think about how I, that's that's the, the 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 tuition i paid is how i like to think about it it's now I have to look at that account statement and be like, dude, if I just held that and did what I always say to do. Um, but yeah, I love cryptocurrency. I've always been in the space. Um, I like Ethereum, Bitcoin, XLM. Um, I always see you talk about uh, Chainlink. Um, I just haven't done any research on it and I need to. And there's just so many things. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, there's, there's tons and it's, it's definitely frustrating. Like I, I, I had sort of a similar story. Um, I didn't tell my dad, uh, to do that, but excuse me. I, uh, I bought a fake ID, uh, going into college. And it, at the time I spent three Bitcoin on it, or I think it was like 80 bucks or like a hundred bucks total. I uh, mean, a couple of friends went in on it. We're like, all right guys, yeah, we just buy a couple of Bitcoins on this website. We like send it over to China. It's like, you know, whatever. And, um, yeah, we definitely. I, I even think we had some left over. I'm like, oh, dude, like we bought, you know, uh, like eighty seven dollars mm -hmm. worth of Bitcoin. They only needed eighty. Like, we're, like oh, we'll just let you know, seven bucks. Like, who cares about it? Like, I wish I could find that wallet. Like, I feel like seven dollars in Bitcoin back then was was probably like worth like point three today or something. Like, yeah. actually, like Bitcoin, you know. Um, but anyway, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I definitely, I definitely had a similar experience. And and I look back at some of my old, you know, Coinbase stuff where I buy. Bitcoin and when I was in college for like 900 bucks or something and mm -hmm. then I sell it and I buy it or buy Litecoin for like 14 bucks and sell it for 30 something I'm like yo I made 100% this is crazy and then it goes yeah. up to 375 and I just want to like run down the street and cry mm -hmm. like this is crazy man yeah. um, but no just you know just sort of round things off with crypto and, and, and chain link like how I perceive chain link is um, if you can imagine sort of a plumbing system between mm -hmm. uh, different uh, blockchains, right? Uh, I get, you know, my, my favorite analogy here is, is to say if Bitcoin was the computer and Ethereum was the operating system that, you know, brought applications to life on a computer, 
Chainlink would be the internet that brings real world information into those applications, making them like really useful. Um, and I think they have like an, an integration network of like 530 some different blockchains and projects that use them. Um, they just, they're, they're really cool. Uh, so definitely check them out and mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I can send some more info on that if you're, if you're curious, but yeah, man, I think, um, yeah. So me personally, I, I definitely have, um, probably more than I should with cryptocurrency. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I uh, had an 8 a.m. meeting this morning. I was it was a five hour five hour sleep session last night. But no, I think I have a little bit more than I showed with cryptocurrency, and um, I, I definitely need to average out of, out of that as as we see hopefully a market top in the coming coming months. Mm -hmm. um, uh, definitely a little bit about Rally Road though. I got hooked on some of those uh, items. Let me let me let me share with you. Have you heard of Rally Road? No. What? Uh, so it sounds really familiar. But it's 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 a way that you can just like buy random things that you think are gonna appreciate in value. So for no, example, don't show me this. <laughs> dude, I've I've spent like <laughs> no I like I'm thousands really... of dollars on this shit, man. Oh, no. Okay. So I bought no, you like buy shares in like like they like uh -huh. securitize something. And so I bought one share of a nineteen ninety nine Pokemon first edition complete set. That's cool. I bought one uh how many shares? I don't know. I just I bought shares in a 1960 Muhammad Ali rookie card, in a 1999 Pokemon first edition booster box, uh, Charizard, as well as a, a uh, 2016 Kobe Bryant farewell game hardwood floor, um, a Panini National Treasures Patrick Mahomes. This thing which blew my mind. I I, I can't show you because I know it's not going to like appear. But uh -huh. anyway, it's a 1985. NES Super Mario Brothers video game. I bought two shares of it for a total cost basis of 150 bucks, and now it's worth 500. Like four months later, and I'm just like, yo, what? How, how do these video games appreciate in value so much? That's crazy. But dude, there's tons of stuff. Like, like I just saw <laughs> they they just released the ability for someone to buy. Um, let me see if I can find it here. It was like a Triceratops skull or some crazy shit like that, dude. Like. Yeah, a megalodon jaw. I mean, how wild is this? That's like crazy. it's so I, I I just I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's it's not investing versus just straight up gambling. But I think it's kind of cool to to kind of put I some think money that's towards the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> now my wife's gonna kill me because I'm gonna spend all of my money on this. But how? I don't know. I'm gonna have to do some research because. Okay, um, I have this beautiful AirPod case and I'm selling uh, 100 shares. So this case is worth $100. Each share is $10 um, or $1. Or $1. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I will sell you one share of it. So now you own one one hundredth of this case. What does that mean to you, to me? Like, can when do you make money? What if I sell it? How is it securitized? So, yeah, so I believe, and let's use Masterworks for an example because they do artwork, mm -hmm. which is one piece of something and it's very expensive and all this right. other stuff, right? But how their business model works is they provide both the exposure to rare, interesting assets as well as the secondary liquidity market behind it. Mm -hmm. So you can put up for sale, hey, I have my shares of my AirPod case. I have five shares. I don't want them anymore. Does anyone want to buy my five shares? Um, I paid five bucks for them total. I'll sum to you for six bucks total. And someone might want that inside the app and they just go in and mm -hmm. buy it. Um, and that's, that's the way, that's, that's sort of how that rolls. Um, but then I think how it could also work, and I know this is how Masterworks does it. After you buy a piece of artwork that's been around for seven, 10, 20, 30 years, however long that, that, that timeline is, mm -hmm. um, they sell it I'm, or, or something gets sold at auction or something happens there. And once that happens, Masterworks, similar to how a, like a VC fund would have an exit, Masterworks takes a 20% carry on the sale. So just like 20% of all profits go to them. And then they begin to proportionally distribute the profits back to their um, investors uh, you know, in proportion to how many shares they bought. Um, all this is registered with the SEC. It's all okay. uh, so, you know, securitized through the SEC, nothing crazy like that. And you have to you know, sign documents every time you buy something. It's not just like a swipe up on your Robin Hood yeah. type deal, right? Um, but yeah, man, I think it's just, you know, I got a couple cool. grand in there. I think it's fun. And uh, maybe it's a, 
element. It's just a hobby for now, but maybe it could turn yeah. into something cool. I love collecting like physical stuff. Mm -hmm. And I feel like now I'm just going to waste all my money on here. Um, and just get obsessed with it. Cause that sounds, it sounds so cool. I love the fact that like I can say I own X, Y, and Z. Um, so I'll take a look at that. I'll let you know if I find any problems with it, but I love the concept. It's so cool. Yeah, man. Please let me know for sure. Yeah. Um, I know one of the last things on our list here of goodies to talk about. Um, you said you wanted to talk about companies like public and Robin hood have made it really easy to invest, but not easy to learn. How, yeah, I think how yeah. can yeah. we make it easy to, where do people go to learn? Or do they just have to figure it out? I think right now, generally speaking, you've got, you know, finance media companies like Fox Business or CNBC or I don't know, whoever else, right? These old tired media companies with Jim Cramer or some old guy, assuming you understand what the bond yield curve means and mm -hmm. you understand what GDP stands for, screaming in your face to buy stocks or sell stocks or what this is or what this is. And despite their intentions likely being good, those actions don't resonate well with the masses. And if we're ever going to close the wealth gap, we need to get the masses investing as soon as possible. Um, and that, you know, that doesn't mean buying biotech companies or EV companies. That means like you buy something from target, you should take $2 that same day and put it in target stock. Right. Um, but unfortunately people are either intimidated or they don't have the resources and tools in front of them to, effectively learn and execute on the very, very low hanging fruit of what investing towards retirement really is. Um, and so at the end of the day, I guess like that's what I try and strive for and sort of what this, you know, brand of Austin Hankwitz or Wits business, or whatever I'm trying to build on the side or just in, in, you know, in perpetuity turns into, it's like, we get it. Everyone's an investor now, right? We have public, we have Robinhood, we have Weeble, we have Coinbase, like everyone's an investor. But now how do we make sure everyone's an educated investor? How do we make sure that everyone understands like, okay, you own Netflix stock. Let me walk you through their last earnings call so you understand how good or bad the company did. So you can now make an educated decision as if you want to keep or sell, you know, keep the stock or sell it. Oh, let's talk through, you know, this is what Coinbase, or Amazon's acquiring MGM for $9 billion. You know, that just came out this week or something. Let me explain to you how that impacts their Amazon Prime model, the type of, you know, movies and, and shows or whatever that come along with that. And maybe now you're even more excited about Amazon and you might want to buy more stock or maybe you're not so much and you want to sell. But I think what's, you know, frustrating is a lot of people's actions are dictated by um, things they might see in the news that they might not have the best understanding of, the, you know, the finance media news. Um, where I think if, if I wish there was a mechanism or some sort of ecosystem in place that said, you know, here are the 14 really important things today that were released as it relates to your portfolio. Um, here's them all explained in an easy, digestible, concise manner that you can make actionable, you know, events out of. Right. Um, and I just, I think that's, I think that's where a lot of this starts heading toward as it relates to the retail investor and the 14, 15 million people that signed up for Robinhood or these other brokerage accounts in 2020. It's like, now you have all this, you know, my, my friend, Chris Camillo, he runs like the dumb money YouTube channel. It's like, you know, you have all this dumb money, right. Mm -hmm. Running into the stock market. And unfortunately, if you don't educate them in such a way that they understand what they're doing, like they will likely not, you know, they'll be jaded to the stock market because yep. bad things will happen. Let's make sure that that doesn't happen. Let's make sure we get them all investing. We close the wealth gap as soon as possible. Um, you know, there's not much we can do for the income gap. That's education and, and, and vocation right. and things like that. But the wealth gap, just get everyone investing. Like that's, that's the most low hanging fruit. I love it. Absolutely agree. I have nothing Thanks, to add. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I, I love, the, uh, I love the, uh, the agreement. Awesome. I appreciate yeah. it. No, you and I are so much on the same page about a lot. And I, I it just, it makes me happy to know that there are people like this creating content and there are people like this with a, a genuine heart, essentially, to want to get people educated, want to build a community and want just everyone to grow 
so they all have positive experiences and that's what we're here for and that's what we're 100%. doing and and that's 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 my purpose of this podcast actually is to weed out all of the toxic stock talk is to collect all of the people that I think are genuine and um, pull together educators, pull together people who are striving towards a positive change in the world of finance. And that's why I'm super excited. You were able to hop on a call and, and share your knowledge with everybody here. hundred percent, dude. I, I, I totally agree. I, I don't think this is a zero sum game, right? Yeah. I think that everyone as a collective can, can win. Um, and despite the stock market, particularly being a zero sum game, there are ways that we can all win this game of, of the stock market together. And that's not just through the stock market. That's also through understanding that you should probably not have all this credit card debt. You should probably not be driving that $90,000 car. You should probably consider, you know, either going back to school or, or, or working another job as you go back, like whatever, right? It's like the stock market's this one component of this massive pie. Like it's one, it's one slice of the pizza. And that whole pizza is your financial picture and like the most responsible way towards building wealth. And until everyone's able to understand how they like piece those pieces of the pizza (laughs) together, um, then it's just like kind of shooting in the dark. But cool, man. I'm glad you agree. I I totally agree with a lot of things you've said as well. And and I've been honored to be a part of this podcast. Thank you. Can't wait to be back. Yeah, no, I look forward to it. Uh, Before we end this though, can you tell people to make sure that they like the video? Because what I've noticed is people watch these videos and then they love the video and then they just move on. But we just need like a solid reminder to just like the video. So I am speaking now towards everyone watching this video. We all know how the YouTube algorithm works, right? If you like a video, the more people that like the video, the more likely that this video will pop up on someone else's subscription box or whatever that looks like. If you learned something, if you got excited about this, if you know, however you're feeling now that you've watched this or listened to this podcast, you want someone else to feel like, you can help that happen by just liking the video. So click the like button and we'll get rolling. Let's do it. Let's change the world. Thank you. That's what I've been saying. (laughs) All right. And that's a wrap.